Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and I'm gonna do a painting today, and I hope that you'll join me. I'm gonna do it in line and wash, and this is going to be of some boats. Today, I'm gonna to be painting in my moleskin watercolor sketchbook. Let's find a, a nice blank page in here. And I've got uh, my fine liner pen. It doesn't really matter what kind, as long as it's waterproof. Uh, this is a 0.3 nib. I've got a pencil and a rubber just for the initial sketch. I've got my little set of watercolours here, uh, which are just a kind of set of colours that I particularly like and I've chosen to use. And there's a link in the description box to all of these colours if you're interested in them. But you don't have to use the exact colours that I'm using. Uh, you, can, uh, you can use whatever you've got. I've got my usual paper towel and some water. And then today I've got a travel brush. I wanted to get a travel brush to go on holiday with and I've not used this very much but um, I've taken brushes away before and they've bent the nibs because they've not been stored properly. So I like that this one came in a nice little tube. So I'm going to give it a go. It's a bit big. It's a size 10 I think but there wasn't really a lot of choice in the size. I would have probably preferred a slightly smaller one, but I'm gonna give it a go and probably do quite loose color painting uh, with that. I do have a little selection of brushes off to the side if I decide I want to use something smaller. And if I do, then I will let you know. So let's move the painting stuff out of the way for now. And just work on the sketch. So let's turn it round. So we're in portrait mode and uh, let's bring the photo here. I'm going to start putting in some lines just for guidance, um, just to divide the page up a little bit and let me know where things are. There's quite a lot going on in this picture and it's you know, just going to help me to kind of position everything. So there's a line maybe two thirds of the way up, which is the top of the ramp. There's a little kind of building above that. There's a bit of a gap and then there's the harbour office and that's completely the wrong um, kind of angle for it but I'll sort that out later. And then coming down the hill there are some boats on their sides. There's the big boat, well, it's not actually bigger than anything else, but it's the one that you can see best because it's right in front of you. So that's there. It's got a wheel because it's on a little trailer. There's another boat kind of here, like that kind of shape. And then there's another boat kind of beyond that, like a yellow one. I think that boat needs to come a bit higher up. And the yellow boat there. It's a weird shape that I've put in, but I will again fix that later. There's a boat leaning up against the railings up here. And then something next to it, which I can't work out what it is. So I think that's a good start. I've got this jumble of shapes, which I'm going to slowly turn into recognisable objects. So let's start with the boat in front of us. So I've put in this weird shape, but actually I think the corner of the boat closest to me is maybe there rather than over here. Kind of curves up at the back. There's a whole bit in the middle that I can't see because it's got lobster pots in it. And then this side curves around quite dramatically. It kind of looks really weird. Like you wouldn't expect it to be that shape. 
In fact, I think it comes out even further than I've drawn it here. And the whole thing is kind of foreshortened. And I'm just going to get a little bit of time just trying to make sure I've got this right in pencil first. Because if I don't, then I can't fix it later on. Okay, it's maybe something like that. And then, like I said, in the middle of this boat are lobster pots. So I can do that again in the same kind of way, blocking in a couple of shapes. And if ever an area gets too busy with all of your pencil lines, you can rub it out and then just leave the faint lines there. And when you go in again, you kind of pick the ones that look the best. Putting in a few jagged lines here because this is all sand and seaweed and I can give it the impression that this is different from the paved area further back. Okay, I think this boat's in quite nicely. So I can move on to the next one. Again, I'm putting in the back of the boat and the angle of the back of the boat seems to, if you look at the photo, it seems to kind of follow on from this line and be kind of straight with the, the this edge of this boat kind of seems to follow onto that boat. So that curves around, but that kind of follows on. I'm putting in a little bit of detail with the pencil, but I'll do a lot more when I put the pen in. I always thought that when I got more experienced at making art, I'd actually use the pencil a lot less. In fact, I'm using it an awful lot more. So the third boat, the yellow one, comes up a little way from that one. This one's definitely got a rounder hull than the others. I've drawn that straight across the back but it's not, it's slightly at a jaunty angle like that. And then this angle is tricky to get. I don't understand what I can see here because I can see an awful lot more of the side of this boat than I could of the others. 
So maybe the a hole needs to come in a little bit further. still something about this boat that doesn't look right. I think I'm trying to draw it more from the top down than it actually is. What I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to assume it's a square box and I'm going to draw it in as if it were like a, a bar of chocolate or a matchbox or something and try and get the angles right and then when I've got it I can draw the line down the centre of the boat that isn't actually there, it's just to give me a guide and then curve the sides around. Now let's see if I can get in. That little platform at the front. seat. I feel like I've spent a long time faffing with that and I need to just move on. Next I want to get this um, this house here, it's not a house, it's the harbour office. So I'm going to put in a vertical line for the corner that's closest to me and a vertical line for the corner that's closest, that's furthest away. I'm going to have a vanishing point over there somewhere. A line up through the centre and then bring the ridge of the building up to that line. Got another vanishing point over there somewhere. And then the back of the building like that. It's a shame this side of the building is a little bit featureless, but I can have fun by putting in a drain pipe, I suppose. And then we've just got this little building here, it's a bit smaller than I drew it. It's kind of directly in front of us, so the lines should be horizontal. And it's got a little bit of a kind of a lean to on the side. And then out the front, it's got stacks and stacks of these lobster pots again. There's all sorts going on back here, but I can't see all of the detail. Right, I think I've got enough of a sketch in here. Probably far too much of a sketch. I'm going to go in with a pen 
and start inking in some of the details. little wheel. I think it looks a bit wonky actually but I'll just add to the character of it. And then behind the wheel we've got some struts coming up. We'll come up to here. And then we'll go off like underneath the boat kind of supporting the underneath side and then a thicker like axle at the back and that's got a little bit of like yellow protective stuff wrapped around it and then that goes off to the off the page I've got the keel of the boat sitting on that axle, so let's put that in. And then a nice little curve for the underside of the boat there. And around here and up. There's a little wooden panel on the back here. So let's get that in. And then the top. Comes across like that. And it's got like a curved, slightly curved on top and then a straight line underneath. Around the side of the boat. Try and draw this curve nice and smoothly. I think I could have done that better. And it gets bigger and wider. Well, it looks like it gets bigger and wider as it gets closer to you. It doesn't actually get bigger. It's got a little triangular plate over the front. And then I can put the same kind of curve on this side, but there's a lot I can't see because of all of the, the gubbins in the boat. This curve joins in nicely up here. And then it's kind of straightish up. And there's a little detail on the side of the boat here. There's a little line that runs all the way around. And then there is, I don't know if it's the name of the boat that's been painted out or it's the remains of a sticker or something, but there's something in there. I'll just put a few squiggly marks. And then I can add anything I like. So I've got this bit comes from, there's two points on the side of the boat that come out and one's got a little kind of sausage shaped thing on it to there and then they're wrapped around this strut. Little details like this I really like doing. And then like a rope. forever putting little details in. I think that's the outside of the boat is okay. I'm going to start putting in some of these um, lobster pots on the top there.
I think that's looking good. Let's move on to the next boat, the blue one. So I'm not going to talk you through this one, I'm going to speed it up now. Uh, but the principles are all exactly the same. I kind of follow the outlines, try and do nice smooth lines, and then look to see what details I can add later. go over everything with my rubber, my eraser, <laughs> and if I've missed anything it'll be really obvious. So I can go through and just see if there's any kind of gaps or anything that I've, I've not inked in. So what I can see is I've got a little bit of a gap here and there's just a bit of grass, like the edge of the path on here. So if I just put a few random marks, oh I've gone onto a boat, never mind. Uh, there. Put a few random marks there to kind of make it look like there's grass and try not to draw over your boats. Um, anything else? I could do... The roof here has little roof tiles on. I'm not going to draw every tile but I can give it a little bit of texture to make it look like that. This one doesn't have little roof tiles on, but it does, well, it has to roof, it has a corrugated roof, I think. So if I can put some stripes in for that, something like that. And, oh yes, my drain pipe. I never put in my drain pipe. There we go, something like that. You can go a little bit wild, adding in details, little marks, lines, all sorts of things. Um, I think that's probably it for me. I'm going to add some colour now. 
what I've got here is quite a small detail drawing and a big brush and they're not ideal bedfellows but I think what I'm going to do is going to try and do like a quite loose watercolour effect on this and um, get in some of the bright colours of some of the boats and then um, and then maybe I'll splash some paint around we'll see I think it might call for it like seaside harbour-y scenes seem to call for lots of kind of bright colours but lots of mess as well so you can see I've got some colours on my palette I can just add to those I've got some reds and some blues and I'm just going to dot those in kind of roughly where they are on the page and that boat there is red you can also, what you can do is you can also change up the colours of some things as well got some red floats in there so if you fancied making your main boat red or blue something to kind of give it a bit of a a bit of life and vibrancy then uh, you can do that um, there's a little bit of red up there that's maybe a bit distracting though um, I'm gonna go in with some blue nice bright blue and do I think cerulean actually Put these boats here and then kind of a darker bit on the back these boats here are nice and blue as well if I I want to be careful I don't go into the red I've just put down because it's not wet and I will end up with purple if I'm not careful and the doors back here are blue as well Add a little bit more concentrated colour in a couple of places. Yeah, that's quite nice. I might do the sh the roof of this like shed thing blue as well. Um, and I might do this one red because it's like that terracotta colour. This boat here has got these wooden bits on and I could just paint them brown but I might paint them orange as well so I've just added a little bit of yellow into the red that I was using before and that's me just add a little bit of colour into there and make it a little bit darker in a couple of places something like that this boat here is yellow um, and I've got a nice goldy coloured yellow, the quinacridone gold that I like. Um, I'm going to do that, but I want this bit to be dry first. I think it is. So let's do start with the inside of the boat to be on the safe side. And then I can just do that a little bit on the outside. That's quite nice, nice focal point there. Um, and then I'm just going to add little bits of all of these colours into the kind of the background detritus. Oh, I've got a nice yellow bit on that axle. And Some nice blue on this lobster pot. Right, I'm going to wait for all this to dry and then I'm going to add some shadows and things to it. Um, and maybe a little bit of more of kind of dirty colours uh, to kind of show the rocks and the sand and stuff like that. 
Right, in my palette I've already got a little bit of a grey colour mixed up. It's a little bit warm and I think I want it a bit cooler. I'm going to add a little bit more blue into it. You can make any kind of grey colour by mixing blue and brown together or if you're using primaries you can mix uh, blue, red and yellow together and um, you'll get a kind of a neutral colour. Um, I want a little bit of this to make some nice shadows on some of the sides of the buildings and maybe on the walls and things like that. So the side of this like harbour office, get some grey on it. Um, like down the side here, kind of a little bit on the front of this building here. I've got like the harbour wall here and that should have some on too. And then I'm going to put some like underneath my boats. It's quite an angular shadow from this one of coming out that way. shadows from this wheel and then things like the back of this boat oops my reds run there we go the back of that boat's in shadow um, and then just on the underside on this side so the boat's white but it does have some shadow in it everything kind of around here and I'll put some in the middle on top of all these lobster pots to kind of darken them up as well. Again, the back of this boat is in shadow, so I can layer some of the shadow on top of that dark blue that I got on there. And again, on the inside, shadow is in there too. Boats here, shadows on the back and on the sides. The yellow one, shadow on the back. My blue shadow has made that look a little bit green, but that's okay. This one here. And then again, I'm dotting this kind of shadow colour all around where these little lobster pots and things are up in the distance. And any areas you want to kind of recede, you want to kind of push them back. You can just paint a layer of shadow over the whole thing. I want a little bit of darker colour for some of the really dark bits like the wheels, the tyres on the wheels. So I've added more blue into there. If it was a really bright blue, I'd add a little bit more of a brown or some of the other colours in as well. Um, and then I can use that for like some of these lobster pots as well. Just a couple of stripes and marks to show that some areas are darker than others. I think the last thing I'm going to do is just give this kind of a neutral wash in a couple of places to make it look like tarmac sand. So I'm mixing together little bits of all of my colours up here. So that was the yellow. I've just mixed in a little bit of that red, a little bit of the blue into that. A little bit more red if it goes a bit green. 
and that's going to give me like a nice more neutral tone. And I'm going to paint that just in patches all around here. I'm actually going to put a little bit around these buildings as well because there's a cliff behind there. But it's just a tiny suggestion. And then back to my shadow colour and I can anything that looks like it needs to be a little bit darker, I can just reinforce. under this boat at the front. I can't see any detail on there on the reference image at all. The more shadow I paint underneath it, the more it'll recede into the background. And the more this kind of white boat at the front will stand out. That's the theory anyway. Okay, I'm faffing now. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to call it a day. And I hope that you'll enjoy painting this one along with me. So like I said, you can find the reference image on my website and there'll be a link to that in the description box below. I've got two more seaside shoreline themed videos coming up uh, before the end of the season. Uh, so look out for those in the next couple of weeks. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks. Bye bye.